Welcome to another edition of Full Time Out with Kevin Two Times. We have another special guest for this episode. KZ, tell us who you have, man. Of course, another special episode of Full Time Out. You know, I brought I brought another brother of mine, you know, who had a very, very unique basketball journey. Uh, he started out in Australia where he was, you know, one of the best prospects in this country, even had the chance to represent his country at the highest level. Um, however, he also did some some of his high school in the United States at Brewster Academy where we met. Um, he had a killer senior year. Um, he, he went on to spend some time at UCLA before turning pro and then eventually got drafted by the Sixers. So without further ado, um, you know, welcome on the pod, my main man, Jonah Bolden. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Pleasure to be on here. No doubt. You, you know, you, you've had, like I said, a very, very unique journey. And, you know, that's why I thought it was very important for you to come on this pod. Um, cause you know, you know, a lot of kids out there think like, like we always talk about this, me, me and Kevin, how a lot of people think it's easy and it's a narrow, narrow draft to success, but you know, obviously, uh, you had your own little journey. So we felt like it was important for you to come on here and talk about it a little bit. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I think everyone's, everyone's kind of got a, a different journey, um, whether right. it's, you know, shorter, longer, mine right. was a little bit longer and, and, you know, I had to somewhat travel the world to, to get to my end goal. But, but, you know, looking back on it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, growing up in Australia, I had, I had definitely big aspirations to play in the league. You know, it was kind of something that was at the time very far away being, you know, in the, in the whole Australian scene and not too kind of, you know, firsthand connected to the NBA. It was more so like the NBL at the time and, and guys around me. So it right. seemed like a dream at the time and it seemed like something that I was, it was, it was far away. But, you know, as things kind of got, got closer and as I got older, I took a trip over when I was about uh, 15 with the Adidas Nations team. Long Beach, myself, Ben Simmons, Dante. We kind of just played and just had some fun. For me, it was the first time being over here and, and I realized just, just how different it was at the time to, to being back home in Australia. So as soon as I got back there, I just told my dad and, and, and everybody that I wanted to make that move and, and kind of, you know, I, I saw how real it was once I came here and how achievable it was. So for me, it was, it was just a no-brainer to, to make sure I, I took the next step in, in kind of following my aspirations, you know. Yeah, actually, I just had a quick question, quick question yeah. about that. Uh, who, was, who was kind of the first, you know, in Australia, who was kind of the first one to, you know, going over to the United States at an early age? Who kind of started that wave or was there somebody that recommended yeah. you to do, make that move? Um, I don't say at the time I didn't really I didn't really I, I didn't uh, have anyone that that had that I knew had um kind of made the move over. No. There was guys like Patty Mills and there was some guys that Australians that were in the league. I didn't uh, I didn't see the I wasn't aware at the time of their kind of path their early stage what they had done to get there. Um, right. It was it was I knew that there was the, a team that was always going to Adidas Nations every year from Australia, and then I had gotten the the kind of invitation to go. Um, that was the first year I think we had actually done a, a proper one where we brought guys that were interested to, to, to make the move before it was kind of just a, a kind of collective annual thing. But this this year, the, I think it was 2013, 2000, 2000, no, 2012 maybe, um, mm -hmm. where, where they had, had dedicated the, you know, the 10 roster spots or whatever to guys that were, were really interested in making the move over. So it was an opportunity for us to kind of come over and see firsthand I mean, for me, anyway, that was kind of the mindset to come over firsthand and see if, if it was worth the move. It was, you know, worth the risk for me. And it was kind of ticked all the boxes. So as soon as, like I said, as soon as I came home, I was like, you know, I had to make that move. You know, you talked about you, Ben, obviously Dante, as a couple of guys that from Australia that made that move uh, eventually mm -hmm. to the States. Um, so there's been a little rise in terms of Australian basketball, especially in the last 20 years. Is there anything particular that you could attribute to? Uh, mm -hmm. that sort of, you know, rise of talent uh, yeah. as far as the Australian no basketball doubt. goes. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I think, I think you know, honestly, uh, from, from being someone that's, that's come from there and, and being around guys that, have, that are here now and, and knowing guys and being in contact with guys that are still there, um, I think what it is is, is more or less just, just seeing the, the influx of guys like myself, Ben, Dante, um, you got younger guys coming through the through the through the systems, whether that's through the you know the NBA academies or that's, mm -hmm. that's you know the the high schools over here. They're just seeing how uh, uh, it, it is it isn't as as for my, like I said myself, it was it seemed as something that was so far away. And then yeah. once we had kind of done it, you know, we we set the, the tone. Guys were like, oh, okay, you know, it's it's not as hard as we had imagined. Let's right. just kind of take the same same route, whether that's you know doing the Adidas Nations. Because now that's Adidas Nations every year, you know, the, the Australian yeah. team. I mean, now it's actually changed. So I think it's a, 
I think it's a general uh, Asian team. I think they're doing a thing, but very much using the that as a path to getting over here. And guys are are more comfortable with telling their parents or or using us as an example. Like, hey, you know, look, they have done it. It's very much possible. Like, let's 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 get together and do it type thing. So yeah. So eventually, you know, fast forward a little bit, um, you decide to make the official transition to the United States um, mm-hmm. and spend and, and spend your last year. Um, I, I know, I remember originally you were supposed to go to Finley Prep, which is another respected school, and yep. then you ended up making that move to Brewster Academy. Just kind of tell your audience uh, just a little bit yep. about, like, you know, that whole transition and playing, you know, American on American soil for, for a full mm-hmm. year. Yeah, so I, mean, I was at Finley uh, here for, actually, in uh, Nevada for about, I mean, I got here in the beginning of school year, so it was, I was getting right. August and then all the way up until pretty much December. Um, when some things happened right. over there and then I just, you know, myself and my family made the decision to kind of head over to Brewster. Um, mm-hmm. But originally, you know, getting over to, to Finlay, it was, it was guys like, you know, Kelly Oubre and, and Rashad mm-hmm. Vaughn and, um, you know, a couple other guys that are now, you know, um, Justin Jackson right there from, from your guys' side of the... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah Justin yeah, Jackson. The, yeah, yeah, that's from, my, that's you know, my young player. That, was there. Yeah, played at Maryland too after, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. exactly. Uh, and yeah, he he's doing doing real well for himself. But yeah, after after that, um, kind of made the transition in, in around December to head over to Brewster. Uh, and then you know, I mean, you know, you know yourself, Kev. Things kind of took off took off from there for myself on a, on a on a very much uh, uh, basketball level, being around guys like yourself and the rest of the team in a more uh, structured environment. You know, we, we yeah. were day to day kind of prep school, academics was taken care of, and then there was the the, the dedicated focus to the team and. And you know, eventually winning the national championship. But but coming through, uh, you know, when I first got there it was December, so it was cold as ever. Snowy, <laughs> like, <laughs> seeing that, you know, so yeah. I was kind of in shock coming mm-hmm. from. Uh, you know, December in Australia is is straight beach time. You know, summer yeah. weather. Everyone's kind of getting ready for outdoors, and I'm I'm going in. You know, six feet for New Hampshire. <laughs> so it was it was, yeah, it, was yeah. it was a transition. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Um, but it was it was it was fun because in a sense it, it brought us all closer. Um, I was coming in uh, uh, as you know, ha- kind of at the halfway point. Um, mm-hmm. You guys had been there a little bit prior, so it was it was still a transition on both ends. You know, my end and then and then on the on the team's end, kind of accepting and, and us transitioning to to being a, to being a unit. Um, but it was really good and kind of took my uh, you know collaboration, teamwork, you know, people skills to a to a whole nother level. And one thing I think, you know, I remember looking at those Brewster teams, you, you brought in a new element in terms of how you played with, you know, your feel for the game and your passing and everything else. So mm-hmm. I'm just wondering, is that a lot of Australian players that, that come through, um, they tend to have that same kind of feel for the game. Is that something that, you know, in terms of development of players that, makes that you guys have a much better feel for the game than maybe some of the American players or it's just yeah. maybe particularly to you that you had it but I, I kind of tend to see you know if you look at the yeah, guys yeah. even the older guys like Bogut, uh, Delhi, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. you, Ben, uh, even Dante you know you kind of ha- have that you know feel for the game you guys are really good passers yeah. tend to know really how to play the game you know. Yeah yeah no, no doubt it's definitely a similar theme among all of us kind of Australian I've, I've definitely noticed um and it's, 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 you're right, it's, it goes back to the, the development stage, you know, where we're brought up in, in very much uh, uh, kind of dependent on the other teammates type, you know, where, where the focus isn't, isn't more so about the scoring or the individual, it's more so about the one through five at the, on the court and then the, you know, five through, through 15 that are on the bench kind of all individually uh, kind of attributing to the win. Um, and so mm-hmm. coming up, that that's that's kind of, ingrained in our in our basketball IQ to know that you know if, if another guy's open he has a better uh opportunity or 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 or, or you know a more advan- advantageous kind of position than me on the court you know it should be a no-brainer to get him the ball um yeah. and that's kind of like a thing that yeah. I, I definitely in agreement with you see it across the board in all Australian Dante Ben Ben's kind of like the the pivotal being a point guard being the dude that's at the top of the key passing it you know 99 percent of the times he he, he embraces that um, or embodies that kind of pass first mentality. Um, and sometimes, sometimes to, to an extent that people, you know, putting him down for not shooting it. Whereas yeah, you know, if, right. you, if you really get down to the, the roots and, and everything of it, he, he knows and, and anyone else that knows basketball is that, that pass was, was hundred percent more effective and, and better right. for the team than if he were to shoot it, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's just kind of, 
like I said, it's, it's, it's a mentality where it's pass first, team first, and, and individual kind of, kind of second. And don't get me wrong, it's, it's, and, and, and for myself, I, I see it too sometimes where it's unselfishness can, can actually be you know, harmful to the team where it's like guys are getting on you, no. like, yo, shoot, shoot the ball. You got to, you got to do that. You know, you got to, sometimes you got to be selfish, but, but yeah. on, in, in a general scheme, I think the, the Australian uh, development stage is what attributes to, to the pass first mentality. Mm. And if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, you also have a, a father who played pr- professionally for a long time, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I'm just assuming yeah, yeah. that, must, dad, have, that uh, must have helped as well. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. He, um, Growing up, I mean, I was just around basketball all the time, and and mm-hmm. he he kind of like guided guided myself through it. You know, there was never never a, a stagnant kind of pressure to play basketball. I tapped into you know tennis and and yeah. soccer's and AFLs and then all the kind of sports, but just ended up kind of following basketball. Mm-hmm. And and he was kind of there to to guide that. And himself, you know, the way he played was very much a, a power forward, kind of at the elbow mid range guy that that was okay. passing it and seeing yeah. the teammates. Uh, teammates first so that's kind of another thing that attributed to, to my my kind of uh, team mentality so let's fast forward again a little bit now um mm-hmm. you know senior year at Brewster is over um you decide to make your college decision what led you to uh UCLA and if, if was there any other schools that were pretty much close um during your process or uh, do you think it was the best fit um you know what was it yeah I mean it was it was kind of a big big kind of decision at the time i mean i was i was uh you know the the recruitment the college recruitment process kind of started when i first touched down in in the states uh especially going to finland you know it was one of the, one of the highly i guess projected high schools at the time prep schools at the time and and yeah. anyone that kind of had a had a name on the roster was was thrown in that that pool of 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 college recruits so i was getting kind of the standard um uh uh, uh, uh i guess college scholarships that you know the UCLA's I had, I had Louisville um mm-hmm. you know my, my dad being from from Flint Michigan we had Michigan he took a tour out there uh, a visit out there um mm-hmm. and then when when I officially kind of moved to Brewster and, and things got closer and, and kind of down to the to, to the graduation where where we'd have to make a decision I took that I actually took one um official visit out to UCLA um right. one one visit in, in general um and and, and kind mm-hmm. of it was a two-day thing and Went through with the coaches and saw how how out there it was very much it, for me. It felt like home, you know, Sydney and Los yeah. Angeles the lifestyle yeah. and and yeah. how people were and um mm-hmm. you know the, at the time that the the team you know Coach Alford and 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 the guys like uh, uh you know Tony Parker's and his son was his son was a point guard at the time. So they had a very much yeah. a my freshman year coming in was very much a a, a, a nice team. Yeah, Norman Powell actually was mm-hmm. was on our team at the time. Yeah, um and so. So for me, it was at the end of the visit, it kind of, I had nothing to kind of go against or, or, or nothing that was kind of telling me no to UCLA. And, and, mm-hmm. and, and I was kind of, all things kind of ticked the boxes. So, so I just made right. the decision with my, my dad and we kind of went through with it then and there. And then there was about a month left at, at, at uh, Brewster where we kind of got things ready and made that transition out there. With that UCLA team, uh, mm-hmm. Did you see a big transition from playing in obviously uh, a prep school, or you, you felt like the level was actually uh, it was that not that big of a transition from going to Brewster to uh, to UCLA? So was that a big uh, a big step up from the from the high school days? Like uh, you're talking about in, in terms of basketball wise on, on court? Yeah, exactly. Basketball on court. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. Um, yeah, for sure. The, it was just very much more. Um, I wouldn't say professional, but much more, uh, you know, schedule, uh, scheduling was, was much more intense. You know, guys, guys were obviously getting ready for the drafts and, and mm-hmm. you know, things are, things are getting more kind of serious. You're having to weigh up, you know, your class times with, with, with uh, you know, practice, which we were doing at, at Brewster, which was, you know, very helpful in that sense. Um, yeah. But it was much more, uh, you know, sports focused in the sense that UCLA was and, and you know, still is a, a top tier kind of sports school so you know there yeah. was always that kind of lingering pressure over the the Bruins to to make sure that we're on on point every every time we step on the floor so us knowing that as players coaches knowing that themselves there was always kind of that collective collective uh, awareness that we we were always uh, kind of on uh, had to always be you know green lights and focused and, and ready to go um, and so myself kind of embraced that as soon as I got there and and there was, you know, the the the, the two a days. It was it was it was kind of taken up in terms of intensity and in practice and and things like that. And then the on court, you know, you, you're not you're not going from 
children kind of you know 17 16 year olds to guys that yeah. can also be seniors that are you know yeah. 24 year olds you know so you're going up against you know, men and, and and bigger stronger quicker guys that you know they like i said before they're they're looking at at us as you know two months they're going into the draft so their thing is you know, pretty much going up against guys that are getting ready for the league and and you got to kind of adjust you know accordingly so during your redshirt freshman year you you had a torn meniscus an injury mm -hmm. did you feel like uh that injury kind of you know did it have any effect on your game afterwards during the seasons that you played at ucla or you felt like you know you came back as the same player uh as you were prior to that that yeah, not at all. Um, I don't think it, it definitely didn't hinder me, um, you know, on, on, a, on, a, on a negative basis. In fact, it, it gave me a little bit of time. It happened, uh, you know, whatever we call it or not, perfect timing. You know, obviously, it's mm -hmm. not, you know, no injury yeah. is good. But, you know, timing wise, it was right in between the seasons. Um, yeah. We still had we still had roughly uh, you know, six to eight, six, six weeks, six, eight weeks before we were kind of getting ready for, for our first game. So, uh, I wouldn't say it affected me on court. In fact, it you know forced me to to, to kind of work on the the weight room and the upper body and 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 focusing on 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 actually rebuilding the strength around those muscles to to, to make sure it you know it doesn't happen again, which you know yeah. you know thankfully it ha it hasn't. And in a sense, it's it's gotten sh stronger because of the the awareness that you know that injuries are possible. You know, guys that go you know their careers and 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 myself included. You know, up until then there wasn't. I never really had a. a Kind of hindering injury that would put me out for whatever it was six weeks so when that did happen it's kind of like a, a reality check on, on athletes to kind of be like you know this is injuries are real you, know, you got to kind of take advantage of the time and and make sure you're putting in the effort to, to to surround those muscles with i mean surround those kind of bones and your knees with the right kind of muscles and, and making sure that you're putting in the work before you step in on the court um you know whether that's weight room stretching and then and then post post practice or post post game making sure you're getting the recoveries and and for me, that's kind of like the aspect I took from it is just putting in those extra, you know, you hear about it on the stories and, you know, the, the guy that goes 17 years, what do they do and that kind of stuff. And yeah. For me, yeah. that, that's exactly it. They just, they just took the time before and, and after that the other guys don't. That's it. Man. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely took a, a negative situation and turned it into a positive. And yeah. you know, that's, how, that's how everyone should, should react to those kind of things. If they want to bounce back at least. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you um, you know, after you you spent obviously two years at UCLA, um, you know, coming from Australia, you pretty much had the chance to, you know, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you pretty much had the chance to even go pro fresh out of high school, but you mm -hmm. decided to go, you know, after your second year at UCLA. Um, what kind of what kind of what kind of made you make, uh, take that decision at that mm -hmm. at that particular uh, moment in time? And what 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 made you think that it was best for you to go pro? Yeah, um, I mean, at the time, I just wasn't satisfied with where I was, um, mm -hmm. kind of basketball-wise. I, I, I was, I was just—it was the end of uh, sophomore season. It was actually pretty much midway point of summer. Um, right. We were in summer school and practicing, working on, and I just wanted to, you know, I was working out with some guys and some guys from the, from from overseas and 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 whatnot, and, and so uh, I wasn't satisfied with my past you know, personally with my season in, in my sophomore year. And then during the summer, I'm, you know, hearing from, from old friends at Australia, they've gone pro and, and speak with my dad, you know, him having played 17 years professionally and having that experience. Um, mm -hmm. For me, it was kind of just getting to a point where I just had to make the decision that it, doing that was going to take my career to the next level. Um, like mm -hmm. I said, the, 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 the ultimate goal for me coming to the States was to, to achieve my dream. And so at this point, I just realized it was, for, for me yeah. to get to the league, I had to kind of step out of the comfort zone, you know, the, the traditional path I had kind of uh, envisioned at the point, which which was obviously the, the one, two, maybe three years at, in college and then getting drafted for me wasn't, I just didn't, at that point, I didn't see it kind of pertaining to exactly how I wanted it if, if, if I had stayed um, kind of on that, that same uh, uh, path uh, in right. terms of on court and, and just, just, just not satisfied in, in what I was kind of producing. So, I felt putting myself outside the comfort zone and, and pushing myself to the limits was, was kind of like the, the only way at the time my mentality was going to be able to, to, to dig back into the trenches and, and, and get going in, in terms of getting to the league. Um, and so I just kind of got to the point where I was like, told my dad and, and, and some, you know, my, my overall team that, that it's time to kind of get things ready to, to go professionally. And, and, and for me, it was kind of like the do or die mo moment from, from my career. You know, I had to take the next, yeah. you know, once I left UCLA, it was, it was like, 
now is now is you know I, I had made the decision of myself. You know, everyone else was at the point you know wanted me there. Obviously, Coach Alfred and, and the UCI team wanted wanted me there for the for my junior year. And my dad, is, in the same kind of aspect, you know, was 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 very much excited for my my junior year and and and, and, and wanted me there. So, on that regard, it was kind of a, a thing I had to just take on myself and 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 push forward and and knowing and, and believing in myself that going overseas or wherever it was at the time was the best option and, and I was going to kind of make the most of it wherever I ended up. And I think for both sides, it turned out pretty well because obviously they had a big recruiting class coming in with Lonzo, but you ended yep. up yeah, exactly. in Serbia uh, that year uh, where you did really, really well, you know, over 13 points a game, seven rebounds. Um, what is one aspect of your game? Because obviously I think the training uh, from – going to, from high school, from prep to college, and then going from college to the pros is maybe a little different because you understand that now it's your job. Uh, mm -hmm. What is mm -hmm. one of the main things that you kind of focused on uh, when you were in that process of going pro uh, that year? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, like I said, for me, what I realized was was putting myself in, in, in the, the and, and, and obviously I, the number one thing I would say is just know what works for you. You know, as a, mm -hmm. as a, as an athlete or as a person, um, when I realized that that you know the times for me when that that success came uh, were were actually you know derived from hard times. Um, that's where I realized you know being comfortable here in Los Angeles, being you know around around you know the NBA guys, working out with them. Okay. Uh, for me, it just it just it it, it was a thing where I, I needed to kind of put myself where I knew this was being outside the comfort zone would pu push me to the edge of, you know, in, not in, not in anger in a sense, but yeah. in, in aggressive kind of getting down and just focusing on what I need to do to, to get myself to my dream. And, and so the number one thing I say in, in terms of like uh, uh, what worked for me was, was a, a rigid schedule, you know, so sticking to a Monday to Friday and, and, and working around the, the team. So, you know, the practice was at three in the afternoon in Serbia. I, I had my own kind of, workouts from from morning leading up to and then and then a dedicated and, and very kind of regimented lunch schedule and just kind of um uh, for me I'm, I'm very much a, a you know I, I like to call myself a quantified citizen so that's that's very yeah. much just sticking to numbers and, and meeting yeah. and numbers meeting goals and kind of uh you know working accordingly so you know by friday i hit a certain number making sure that monday to the next friday and and so incrementally you know week by week you know we, we got to the end of the season and and Little did I know, you know, scouts got, kind of started showing up and, and the, the work on the off court and the practice kind of started to relay to the on court, you know, organically. Again, it, it, it wasn't a thing I was, you know, coming in and, 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 and showing up on the game day, but it was a thing of, you know, Monday through Friday I had done the, the regimented work and then Saturday was the game. You know, in, in overseas, I don't, then there's no league schedule where it's Monday, you're playing Wednesday, you're playing Friday. In, the, in, in Europe, it's you know, guys are working out, uh, practicing Monday through Thursday for the games on Friday, and then the day off Saturdays, and then so yeah. so it wasn't it was it was very much a thing of putting the pressure on myself and 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 taking it wholeheartedly on me to to make that decision and knowing that I I was the one that put myself there, um, mm -hmm. and just embracing that ownership was was the biggest thing. Yeah, definitely, it definitely paid off. So you so you had you was having that great year over there in Serbia. And then, like you, as you mentioned, you know, scouts started to come in a little bit. Um, sure. You know, ar around what time uh, did you know that obviously you was going to put your name in the NBA draft? And and mm -hmm. you know, when did you, when did you kind of like figure it out that okay, yeah, this is my this my dream might might just happen uh, this upcoming yeah. year? Uh, well, for me, it was so. <clears throat> and 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 the thing was <clears throat> leaving leaving UCLA and and going the one year uh, pro uh, the 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 decision as soon as I officially left UCLA um, the decision to kind of I guess come back or declare for the draft me personally was made made then um, as soon okay. as I as soon as I as soon as I um you know it was like all right you know we're going to receive we're not doing the, the the college thing anymore mm -hmm. um, I was just like you know twelve months here and and then I'm coming straight back so. In terms of a, 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 a personal kind of a mental thing, uh, you know, the day I, I, I left UCLA was the day I kind of was, was envisioning, you know, being drafted 12 months later. But from okay. a, from a, from a, a, a official point of view, you know, the scouts showing up, because when I got there, obviously, <clears throat> you know, in fact, me leaving UCLA put me further off the map. Um, okay. You know, it, it actually, you know, took me kind of away from, you know, the media and this kind of stuff. So actually, 
in a sense, when I got there, it was it was a thing of like, okay, Jonah's going home. You know, a lot of guys were hitting me up. You know, where where are you at right now? And all these kind of stuff. So, so so the the official kind of draft kind of I guess declaration was more so, so let's say March. It was it was kind of like the the yeah 2016 March time, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like I said, that's when scouts kind of started showing up and then, you know, media started hitting in and, and it's like, oh, okay, this kid's kind of coming back for the draft type thing. And then that's when it all kind of started happening. But, but from an intrinsic point of view, from a, from a very much personal point of view, as, as soon as I left UCLA, I was kind of on the, on the, the, the track to, to re- be right back here. Just, just had to go and kind of reestablish myself. Mm-hmm. So yeah. basically your, your draft process, instead of being, let's say three months, it was basically a year long draft process where you're yep. auditioning for the NBA for a whole year yep. while also uh, preparing like a pro in those. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's exactly kind of the mindset I had. In fact, even, even more so magnified because like I said, you know, I knew that I knew that going away was going to just take me further. So I knew that the, the work had to be extra. So yeah, I guess mm-hmm. get, get my name back up on there and, and, and guys kind of, back talking and, and, and myself relevant again, I guess. How many, uh, how many, how many workouts did you end up doing uh, for the draft process? I mean, uh-huh. yeah, funny enough. Uh, I mean, we, 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 the, the team I was on uh, FMP had, we went up and, and we got into the, the finals all the way until June. Shoot. It was like, there was <clears throat> three days left to, to, or f- five days left to draft where you know, oh, wow. we, <laughs> my, my agent had to pretty much, we got to a point where we had to sit down with the owner, you know, team over there, and, and, and let him know because because again they're 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 very much and I wasn't on a Euroleague team, you know, I was on yeah. a, a mm-hmm. kind of middle of nowhere guys just doing their thing, and and if they yeah. they kind of get picked up, they'll go to a Euroleague team. So they actually didn't know too much about the the draft mm-hmm. process and how it worked. So you know, we had to mm-hmm. kind of bring the team to to let the owner know like you know if 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 he doesn't leave in 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 two days or three days you know he's not going to get drafted so so honestly i i got back on the on i think the draft was the 22nd i got back on like the 13th we had one we didn't even have time to do uh you know workouts i just had one one big pro day where all the teams you know uh, mm-hmm. came and sh- you know brought their assistants their, their their some some other gms and whatnot and just sat on the sidelines with myself and um isaac mm-hmm. humphrey uh, from Kentucky okay. that was just over there in, uh, in Orange County. So just one big pro day and guys kind of showed up and, and I had a, some interviews after and then 24 hours was on a flight to New York. Hmm. And uh, were you were you kind of aware that you was going to get drafted uh, uh, by, by the Sixers? Was that something that, you know, they're uh, all in your ear on or um, you, um, you didn't really have an idea? Yeah, no. Funny enough, actually, Sixers weren't weren't uh, on on the uh, radar at all. They um they they weren't originally they weren't on the radar at all. Um, and so <laughs> New York, they they. Yeah. I mean, they weren't on my radar in in terms right. of like me me mm-hmm. me uh me kind of knowing that they had interest. Like don't right. get me wrong, like yeah. Ben being there and 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 all mm-hmm. that. Like, it ended up being I think it was perfect. But at the time. Uh, I knew that um, you know a couple of their guys had been out to Serbia to see me and whatnot, but I, I personally hadn't heard anything until we got to New York. It was about mm-hmm. you know beginning of when they when they um, you know the draft starts and we're getting the phone calls. We're backstage. We're back behind you know hearing things and and my agents getting calls and so pretty much it got to to, to they had called up and and let us know the situation with their roster and and what was going on and that you know it, it, they really wanted me but at the same time you know they couldn't you know, guarantee a, a first year kind of right. signing you know it might be a thing of uh you know we have to send him overseas a couple of the teams that wanted me earlier had had kind of the same 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 boat but they couldn't guarantee uh mm-hmm. two uh, 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 one year you know my thing was you know I'm uh, I'm kind of okay with you know a draft and stash for a year just because I've I was just over there it would yeah, be a, okay. Position, that's that's fine. You know, I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna get drafted and then go two years. So so there was some teams that kind of backed off when when we stated that Sixers were the, you know they were a okay with kind of ticking off on you know we just want him one year overseas and then we'll bring him right back. So for me it was kind of like that's perfect situation. They're kind of rolling with the team right now, coming off mm-hmm. of, you know a, 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 the, the the last playoffs and and so it was like okay I'm gonna go back. This time going back to the Euroleague, so it's it's it's, yeah. it's much you know much more professional, much the, the 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 you know obviously the salaries are higher, the competition is higher. It's the second best league after you know obviously after mm-hmm. the NBA, and so it's it's actually for me it was like kind of a, a, a I looked at it as a, as a warm up in a sense. You know I'm going over and tapping into 
a totally different, uh, pretty much a totally different game. You know, playing Euro League, you get yeah. guys that rely completely on their basketball IQ. You know, athleticism is is not as prevalent over there. So, mm-hmm. so me tapping into a to a to a game and and playing with guys that 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 can help me kind of better my IQ on on basketball, knowing that in 12 months time I'm going to get back to a league where you know guys that are the best athletes in the world. So getting kind of tapping into best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. Gave, me, yeah. gave me the, 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 the insight to be like, okay, yeah, that's, that's perfect. And as far as the EuroLeague one, obviously, it is uh, probably the second best league in the world. The fact that you guys played, obviously, you, you played in the Israeli league and, uh, and the EuroLeague. Yeah. Was there any difference in terms of how the coaches manage the team based on the different leagues that you play in? Or, uh, you know, it's all through mm-hmm. the same because whenever you play in the Israeli leagues, the same guys get the same opportunities. And when you get to the EuroLeague, the same or there's a stark difference between how coaches approach the different mm. leagues that uh, you guys play in. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I, on our end, it was it was uh, when we played, it was more so like a, a Wednesday. It was like a Wednesday. A Wednesday was the uh, Israeli league, and then a Saturday was the was the Euro league. And 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 the way they kind of coached it was making sure that obviously the focus was winning the Euro league games and. Mm-hmm. And and we kind of you know we we did get caught off guard sometimes when we would come back to the to the domestic league because you know playing playing the domestic league they they know that you know Maccabi Tel Aviv the team I was on Maccabi Tel Aviv was, was yeah. is play, coming from Euro League so they their teams are readying themselves up you know throughout the week to to kind of play against Maccabi Tel Aviv and make a statement against the Euro League team so so coaches knew that players knew that and we knew that you know we couldn't kind of drop our guard knowing that we're going up against, you know, obviously it's not as great competition as a Euro league, but you still have guys that are, you know, ball players and still, still play the game very much with the tenacity to beat us. So yeah, coaches, mm-hmm. coaches knew that. And, and there was, there was kind of like an equal effort to make sure that coaching was, wasn't uh, prioritized for one league or the other. Um, and, 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 you know, that kind of happened in the beginning with guys and, 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 you know, myself included naturally knew that, that, uh, Euroleague was with our focus, and obviously that's that's kind of like the, the, you're playing on a Euroleague team, so that's that's just natural to to make sure that we're getting ready for the Euroleague games, and then and then you know kind of coming back home and 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 making sure that we take care of business against against the domestic league. But from a from a coaching standpoint, there wasn't too much of a from a difference. I think they they wanted to make sure that they they let us know that there's going to be no difference, you know, mm-hmm. where we coach. Um, you know, going back that that's the Euroleague team, but you know, you go back to Serbia, my first year over in. In FMP, you know, we went through three different coaches within, you know, within six months, and and, and it was a it was a whole another whole another level of of uh, style of coaching from from one coach to the next in terms of, you know, they're very much a, a military style. Um, we were doing you know wake ups at six a.m. running in you know forests and hmm. coming back yeah. and doing that kind of stuff. So the transition from 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 FMP. Uh, my first year then to Maccabi was actually, you know, a, a breeze. Um, and then <clears throat> we had a coach, Spahia, at, at, at um, Maccabi Tel Aviv. So he came straight from the Spurs. So <clears throat> he wanted to bring a, a very much a, a NBA kind of mindset okay. to the team. Yeah. He wanted to bring a, a, a you know, we, we're going to go hard. The, this amount, we're going to take recovery days and this. And so that was never before seen kind of uh, mm-hmm. schematic to you really, that he was kind of trying to bring that, 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 Worked well with us being, you know, myself, Pierre Jackson. You know, you got yeah. guys that are coming from yeah. different, from the league in a sense, um, yeah. and, and 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 very much non-European style. So he, it was that was a a great kind of uh, asset that he brought that helped us along the way. That that I didn't expect at all being in Europe. You know, a lot of guys didn't expect that at all. Um, so, yeah. so at that point, you know, like you, you you've mentioned, you play you pretty much played everywhere. You know, from Euro League to Europe, you know, Australia, United States. You get to the, you get to, you finally get there. You finally get to your dream uh, mm-hmm. for, for for the Philadelphia Sixers, Seventy Sixers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you're playing in the NBA. Tell me, tell me a little about about that experience, because obviously you had a nice run there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, just tell me about your experience a little bit, and and tell me if you, you know, obviously, like I said, you play in a lot of leagues. The biggest difference. You know, from from the NBA to all these other leagues that you played in. Yeah, the, I mean, the experience is it was like no other. Obviously, getting getting over here after Maccabi Tel Aviv, and then just it wasn't even. The, I had already done the draft process. You know, that was the year yeah. before. So coming straight yeah. over from Maccabi, it was it was kind of like you know you've been here before. Let's kind of get going. You just did a year in Europe, and you know you kind of you know had a chance to watch us down. You know, 
Celtic series and, and, and you should, mm -hmm. you know, it was, there was a, it was a, it was a, you know, and a respectful, a respectful kind of, uh, you know, respecting my, my intelligence and my kind of, I guess, experience at the time, which was good. Um, mm -hmm. And it also came with, it came with, you know, expectance, an expectance to produce. Obviously that's kind of like the, the overall theme in the NBA, you know, if they're bringing you and they're, they're bringing you in and they're, they're paying you that, that amount, you know, it's, it's a level of, you know, kind of a respectful amount of pressure on the player. You know, you, you should, I myself like, you know, thrive under pressure and, and I like kind of, you know, putting pressure on myself to, 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 to you know, perform. Um, mm -hmm. So originally the experience coming in was great. You know, it still, it still is very much great. It, it was, it was a very, very, uh, you know, dream come true experience. And then, you know, that lasted, like, I guess the, the honeymoon phase was, was a, a good, couple of weeks and then they clicked in that how, how much it's, it's, you know, the difference in, in terms of MBA to Europe is, is again, how much of a business it is and, and, and how much yeah. guys have to really, mm -hmm. really, you know, take it as it is work, you know, it is your, it is your job. Yeah. It is something that you need to take as, as a, as a, you know, Monday through, like I said, Monday through, it's not even a Monday through Friday in the NBA. I mean, anywhere in the world you're playing basketball, it's not <laughs> Monday through Friday, but, but the right. NBA is, is more so to, to the extent of, you know, it's Monday through Sunday, it's, mm -hmm. you know, you're arriving at home 3 a.m. after the, you know, just playing a back-to-back. -back, you got to wake up, practice the next day, media or something. And then the day after that, we've got to walk through for games. So it's, it's, yeah. it's the thing that it, it, it's the, the, the biggest difference is the one, the time schedule, you know, and I think mm -hmm. that's the biggest, the, 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 the number one thing I see in, in you know, guys coming from college and going to the league is, is, it's no, it's no, you know, there's no dorms, there's no, you know, coming home and, and you've got three or four days a week off where we're just practicing and chilling. And then we got a game. It's, like I said, it's 82 games. It's it's a, it's a very um, you know hard nose kind of uh, uh, getting down to the gritty. You, you kind of staying on. You, you have to be professional um, yeah. to, to to kind of last. And that's the number one thing I'm I see from you know I had a little conversation with Vince Carter when we played them post game. He was he, you know I went back and got some shots up after the game in in their uh, practice mm -hmm. facility and 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 he was just kind of he was in there working out and and, and doing his thing over in Atlanta. Um, and, and, and I was just kind of asking him, you know, what, what, what's, what's kind of got you, what's, what's, you know, how are you doing this still? Like, you know, how are you right. Just, you know, working out right after the game here, you know, this, this amount of years. And his thing was, you know, just one, like I said, just knowing that this is the, the, the NBA, but it is very much your, your job, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and you got to approach it with that kind of mindset that, that this is, this is your passion, but it's also your, it's what's, what's holding your, your family and what's holding your, you know, everybody up. So if you yeah. if you're still kind of it's it's really at the point of transitioning out of uh uh and 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 for me it's it's understanding and harnessing the the passion side you know obviously yeah. playing and, and loving basketball but also knowing how much of the professional and business side and and so the the ultimate i think uh, the what i realized is the optimal player in the league mm -hmm. knows that and and approaches every day uh kind of consistently yeah yeah, it's it's really about you know prioritizing your life uh, basically around the yeah. game of basketball. So you went in uh, with the Sixers. Uh, Brett Brown, the coach there, has uh, a lot of Australian background. Do you think that him knowing a little bit more about Australian basketball and having that overseas background helped you in your transition in the league? Yeah, um, I think yeah. Originally, um, he, he's like I said, he, he's his 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 connection to Australia, his his roots um, there, and and his kind of personal um, relationship with with you know obviously my, my father Ben's father and and, and and all around the Australian kind of basketball world. You know, Brett Brown kind of had a had a had a you know a nice fingerprint and and his kind of touch on from from being there early on and then and then moving on and still still obviously re relaying that you know he 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 elected himself to be and and then guys kind of collaborated to get him the head coach of of, of the national team for a while and that was kind of like a a, a, a a you know statement to his his what he's done for basketball australia and 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 now it's kind of gotten to a point where you know he's he's made the decision to transition out of that but for me coming into to the league it was it was easier uh you know with with him being the head coach don't get me wrong he was very much a, a okay you know he's australian and, and and he's got that kind of australian uh connection and so for me it was it was it was easier in a sense um i didn't want to i didn't want to uh uh like i said i didn't want to look for the easy way or or the 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 kind of tapping into okay yeah you got that australian connection so what's how are we kind of going to use that to the best of advantage the way i kind of looked at it was more so it's great that he has that and and and, yeah. and that's that's good that he's going to kind of help out where needed. 
um, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't, I wouldn't say I, I, I wanted to, or it was the thing where if he wasn't there, it would have been different, you know, uh, like I said, the, 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 my mindset coming in was just wanting to provide the best kind of the team, the best options to win and utilize my skill set. And, and the, the, the best thing in this, this situation was that he knew uh, where I'd come from and my game and, and, and specific kind of position to put me in to thrive, you know, a good portion of my playing um, time during the first season was around when I was at the power forward playing along Jimmy and, and yeah. you know, working, mm -hmm. with my, you know, going full court, playing with that kind of long and he, you know, he would emphasize the, the stretching the floors and that kind of uh, skill set. So when, yeah. when, 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 you know, you have that ability to, for a coach to have that kind of, you know, not, not necessarily need to watch video, you know, footage on, on me for the next you know, three weeks to get, get a feel that that's definitely a, an advantage. Before, before we move on to our, to our, to our last segment, uh, you know, I definitely got to ask you this. You know, you've been in a league. You had you had some definitely some good games. Uh, who is if you have if you can just name one on top of your head a player that you were most impressed with, or a player that gave you you know either the most trouble guarding or anything like that, or just somebody that you know you just uh, you had a a lot of respect for for the way he carried himself mm -hmm. in the league. Is there anybody you can think of on top of your yeah, head? Yeah, I think, I think uh, J Jimmy. Jimmy okay. Butler. Um, I mean, playing yeah. with him, it, you know. I mean, obviously, there's there's a stigma around, around you know Jimmy and the media and what they want to they want to yeah. test the, you know Jimmy Butler. But but obviously that that was kind of like my my you know predecessor view and whatnot. Him coming in, um, but then seeing how how different it was, uh, you know, in person and and actually talking to him and having a conversation and and understanding mm -hmm. where where a lot of it stems from and and just just. Understanding how how he, he you know the, the media is going to do what the media does, but but at the end of the day, you know his thing is just being real, um, yeah. you know, not not uh you know not not kind of sugarcoating anything and just keeping it, you know down mm -hmm. to the down to the as real as possible for, for like I said from 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 the one through five on the court to the you know the the, the you know five through fifteen on the bench, you know he's making yeah. sure that guys are guys are being heard. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the last guy on the bench is, for example, he would jump on, jump on the, the second team, you know, most of the times in practice and he would make sure right. guys are getting, getting, getting looks and, and that kind of stuff. But, and then off the court, you know, he would, he would do things that are very, you know, you, you don't see in media, you, you know, he, he didn't, he doesn't go around telling the teams to, to kind of get this, this you know, put out there, I guess, to, to, to change the view that's, that's already at him, uh, that's yeah. already out there on him, um, you know, little things of dinners and, and things that are just just little things that 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 don't get viewed, and for me it was huge. Uh, and, and then you you know you see in that you see in that now in 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 this past yeah. season. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that, exactly, hundred percent. You know, it's, it's not even <laughs> nothing really even needs to be said. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he just kind of went there and 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 brought the the young guys together. You know, you've got a lot of other factors to it. You know, it's, it's not hundred yeah. percent Jimmy. You know, there's there's a lot of yeah. other you know Iggy's and 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 all, but it's a collective unit that. He, his kind of emphasis was from the beginning of when he came back to the Sixers, you know, just kind of work with him. You know, he's not coming in to, 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 to dominate right. anybody or, or step on anyone's toes, be an ego. He just wants to win one and he wants to kind of bring people along with him that, that want to come along. Um, and for me, seeing that uh, at that position, someone at that level um, still being like that and still acting like, you know, it's his first year in a yeah. sense that the respectability, holding everyone accountable, you know, the water boys, you know, making sure that if, you know, there was there was examples where you know they were not 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 disrespectful, but guys are coming off the bench and and obviously yeah. in the heat of the moment just want their water. You know, like like yeah. you know just want to get it quickly. You know, he's, he's making sure that there's still a very much human human factor. You know, the, the water boys are human. You know, the, mm -hmm. the people that you know. So there's no kind of egos and there's no we're all kind of treated fairly. So for me, the biggest thing with with him was just how the media is just constructing very much what they yeah. want and it's just not letting he, yeah. he, he's you know. And they were a great human being. Mm. Yeah, no, that's very that's very interesting. You brought that up, and, and I'm happy you did actually, because you know we have our own podcast where we talk about hoops basically almost every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jimmy was definitely one of our favorite guys this year. And like you said, the mirror is gonna do their job, but you know what he did this year speaks for itself, most definitely. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, one of go ahead, Kev. Yeah, and I, I was just gonna say, you know, the thing is, and we we often preach about, you know, the the judgment that you get from your peers often matters most than yeah. anybody else. And I think yeah, yeah, no in, doubt. In, in his case, that's really what it is. If you see, look around the league, there's nobody that's going to have a bad word, especially if they played with him uh, about Jimmy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. understanding that and versus the picture that the media tries, tries to paint, then 
you see uh, yeah exactly <laughs> and you can see that like i said you can see that in in, in, in no no uh, i mean i'm not gonna like i'm not throwing out anything here but the media yeah. is, is going to do what the media does and 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 let alone you know you got a team like miami that's that's obviously that every every nba team kind of does their research into the guys they're going to pay and and, yeah, and obviously true. they're not just throwing money around willy-nilly so you know and right. the test to that is is making sure that he got his you know contract and and for that it's it's a big one it's a it's a it's a test to his personal you know they're not going to just throw that type of that type of money on mm. someone that <clears throat> that truly is is a bad mm. person you know what i mean so mm. that the, 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 if the media was kind of on the point of how bad or whatever he is, he definitely wouldn't have got the opportunity he's, he's, he's had with Miami and, 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 and done what he, he did with it. You know, so for that in itself for me was like, okay, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad teams aren't, aren't buying fully into the media and they're hundred percent seeing that he is who he is and, and guys are, um, you know, they're not what the script says, you know, they're, 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 you know, you dig a little deeper, you find out that they, they are, you know, great, great people. And they just want to be able to give, you know, sometimes they're in the, the, the wrong opportunities or sometimes they just they just didn't didn't get whatever it was. And, and, and so he was given that opportunity and, and made the most of it. Just to basically wrap it up a little bit, um, you know, one of the main reasons why I also wanted you on this pod is because obviously I follow you on Instagram and I see a lot of the things you do, man. Yeah. They're very interesting. And I, yeah. I, I, I even sometimes I'll just DM you and ask you questions on them. So you're involved mm-hmm. in in a couple of fundraisers and and yeah. and, uh, and a lot of technology stuff. So tell me just a little bit about that and and the yeah. importance of you know athletes knowing that you know uh-huh. at some point that 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 ball stopped bouncing. So you yeah, know, no you need some. Yeah, you I think need my, to my biggest thing. thing was yeah, yeah. You no, know, I think my biggest thing was just uh, like coming up. I, I I grew up just kind of being around a lot of technology and 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 and, and you know I, I studied uh, you know software design and that kind of stuff growing up. But that was actually Okay. My my reasoning to to red shirting my first year was all those kind of units that were missing from my time in school in Australia, and then coming over here and trying to transition them over. Um, yeah. And so I kind of always had that connection to to the tech side, and 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 as times have progressed, obviously tech has has done nothing but but obviously progress with it, if not you know faster than yeah. than, than humans kind of can can catch up. So that's my thing is really just just bridging that gap of of mm-hmm. technology and and humans and. And, and us kind of uh, 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 learning and educating ourselves. The biggest thing nowadays is you're seeing a lot of all this data talk and all this, you know, the yeah. terms and conditions and a lot of things that just aren't, uh, you know, if you're educated on the subject, it's, it's, it's easy to, to get around and make sure that you, you're being protected. Um, you're being, you're, you, you know, you, you, the right things are going the right way and, and, and yeah. things are going well. Um, and so my biggest thing, uh, the reason I started kind of getting into it was, was just being around guys that weren't as educated into the tech side and were using these platforms that I knew were firsthand kind of taking advantage of their information and, and a lot of different things that were just like, it's just a simple thing of, of teaching and educating the, the, the general, the general um, kind of consensus of players. And, and that's kind of like tech specific when you're getting into uh, uh, off court, you know, not everyone's into the tech side. So giving guys mm-hmm. and, and allowing, you know, myself just seeing guys that, you know, they're, they're not not that they aren't aren't kind of interested in in doing something off the court. It's just guys kind of and myself yeah. included at, at some point just didn't know where to start. Um, yeah. yeah. And so it was it was a thing of sitting down and I had to do it you know with myself and and a couple other people just sitting down and 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 what are the off court kind of what are your off court passions? What are what, what what is it that that you were doing before you picked up basketball? Or you know you got to understand that at some point it's gonna it's you know the ball's gonna start bouncing so. Kind of, you know, I like to use Kobe, Kobe Bryant as a, as a great example. You know, he 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 didn't. You know, there was no compromising of his on court uh, abilities yeah. or, or or compromising his his being on his A game uh, on the court. Yeah. But it was also being smart and 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 very you know quantum minded, knowing that at some point obviously basketball was going to stop, so the seeds had to be planted kind of during or throughout, um, yeah. and and utilizing his his you know the status of being a current player. Um, compared to being a past or an ex player is, is huge in the eyes of, of obviously off court business people and and them knowing that you're you're currently in the NBA and 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 you're able to you know leverage your your off court abilities with your on court abilities and your 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 surroundings so so guys knowing that you know the position they're in even if they are the 15th man on the roster the ability to to connect and leverage your 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 you know your your um, current player status in the NBA is huge to to yeah. a lot of brands and and off court everything yeah. off court you know there's always you know you get down to the roots of humans just that we naturally want to want to partner whether that's partnering with lovers whether that's partnering with friends 
we naturally want to want to want to be in partnership. So yeah. so leveraging, it, 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 like I said, leveraging my position was 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 kind of like the mindset I came in with, and then seeing that other guys kind of had that ability or have that kind of uh, uh, pedestal to do so was was something yeah. that I I I, I want to. And, and, and currently doing to, to make sure that at some point, um, you know, we, we have a good kind of system in play. The MBP, MBPA does a really good good job of in, in season uh, yeah. meetings, whether, you know, this happened into, you, you know, your financials or your financial advisors, or if, you know, teams are now being on their own kind of sections or departments where they're working with players hand in hand. And NBA is slowly getting to a point of, you know, every team is probably going to have a mandated department of, of their financials or their, their kind of, uh, player personnel focusing on on the players away from from their basketball you know the 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 working with their their brands or or their partnerships if they haven't already got that with their management teams so hmm, a lot of a lot of free game man you're giving out a lot of free game right now yeah. and uh it's good it's good to hear really that the N- nbpa like you said is doing, is doing yeah yeah um, no, they're, they're, yeah. they're doing some big stuff for sure yeah 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 no for sure um kev you, you want to add anything else one last thing that we wanted to touch on is uh, maybe some mm-hmm. of the fundraising uh, and opportunities mm-hmm. for younger hoopers that you're uh, involved yep. in. Do you want to, you know, touch a little bit about on that? Yeah, well, uh, we really, we don't. Uh, I wouldn't say we have current. We don't have any current fundraisers. I'm not any, involved in any current. Um, the past ones I was was for uh, the California wildfires. Um, yeah. That was that was a big one there. There was a lot of stuff kind of going on there, and that's kind of uh, uh, where we stepped in and, and wanted to make sure we. We made prevalent, you know, there's a lot of stuff that was just going on at the time. It was obviously, you know, COVID-19, we had a lot of riots, and then there was the yeah. election that kind of took yeah. over, and, and, and some things kind of, I mean, a lot of things kind of got pushed under, under, and then, you know, the, 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 there was a lot of fatalities, and, and, and so yeah. we just we just wanted to kind of bring that to awareness, and, and obviously the whole climate change in general, you know, and, and yeah. getting yeah. down to, it, to understanding that, you know, every individual has a, has a you know, a sense of, or, or a duty to, to, to provide, a, a, you know, positive impact or you know in a sense you know they can also provide negative impact you know that's what's what's where you know obviously not purposefully um but you know sometimes we're doing things and it's just not the right thing in terms of for the for the for the climate or or in general so providing providing uh 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 things like the fundraisers or events uh, setting up events and you know marathons and things like that 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 are geared towards positive you know collaborations between you know youngsters and cl- collaborations between you know inclusivity you know the biggest thing mm-hmm. now is is the whole uh the black lives matter you know i'm, I'm very much a, you know my dad and, and half of being african-american don't, don't get me wrong I, I'm, I'm all for the black lives matter but i'm also all for the you know the all lives matter in terms of yeah you know, just being humans and 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 not necessarily segregating between race or, or any of that more so mm-hmm. sticking to us as one species and kind of figuring out how we're gonna you know, kind of better ourselves together um mm-hmm. that was kind of like the the the, the mindset of, of all of us and and figuring out different ways to like to like i said through through the fundraisers the marathons and those kind of things uh, for sure uh, and you mentioned you know uh the the wildfires that uh in california uh were any in any way involved with uh what happened in january in uh Australia and also you know the terrible wildfires that were going on there oh yeah 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 so we um yeah back then there's uh I think there's a there's a couple articles on when myself mm-hmm. um Ben and, and pretty much all the all MB, uh you know Australian born NBA players kind of got together and 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 we wanted to have an impact of obviously utilizing our, our pedestal and where we were um mm-hmm. you know the cameras being on us worldwide and what was going on in Australia just giving uh, the fans uh, uh, an opportunity to, to to fundraise and and tap into giving back over here. It's it was kind of the media was was putting it to an extent, but there was a lot more that was going on, and and the rebuild was kind of like the focus we were we were kind of uh, gearing towards. The the fires were happening, and 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 they were kind of organically raising funds and taking care of the present, but but our focus was more so the rebuild of the surrounding areas and. And reconstructing uh, homes that families had had lost, and 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 kind of like the post, I guess the post mortem um, mm-hmm. uh, action. Yeah, the last question, pretty much. Uh, you know, what's next for you? Uh, what do you got going on? I know the NBA starts in the December. Yeah. Um, December what do you have 20, planned? Twenty second. Uh, I mean, sure, just just working on now. Like I said, we 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 myself is, is is going to to California next week, just jumping in scrimmages here and there, and and I'm I'm honestly trying to trying to. I'm I'm looking up the the all the scrimmages in terms of tapping into different you know areas around myself and, and working out and, and 
and, 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 and staying on my game, getting ready for December 22nd. Right now, obviously, being free agent, we're, we're gearing towards the, the draft and then obviously post-draft when, when free agency opens up. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. Negotiations and, and whatever happens, happens. But, but I, I, my, my kind of my own personal focus is really on the present and, and making sure that, you know, taking it day by day and, 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 and gearing towards the, the, the beginning of the season. Whatever team I, I'm, I'm ending up on um, within the league is, is is kind of up to them. I'm going to do the best on my end, um, but but it's 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 definitely a fun and exciting time. Okay, okay, that's very interesting. Very interesting. Thank you very much, Jonah, for for coming yes, on sir. the pod. Thank you. Uh, I mean, you know, not only you're a high level high level athlete, but you know, also a very 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 intelligent man. Um, off the court, and I think that's important for a lot of hoopers out there. Eventually, that ball stops bouncing. Just educate yourself on other things, whatever interests you. Um, Jonah, you know, he gave us a lot of a lot of a lot of gems on this spot. So, man, appreciate you for for, for coming through. Kevin, you want to add anything? You yeah, know, I think uh, I think you you summed it up pretty well. Uh, it was really a great conversation, wide ranging of subject because of obviously your background and all your experiences. You know, and the 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 variety of things that you got going on uh you know it's a pleasure to, for us to have you and uh you know we can't wait to see you back on the court uh come come NBA season yes sir thank you guys i appreciate it kevin kev yeah no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. <laughs>